What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the video. Hope you're all doing well. Happy New Year's. And also, hopefully, you all had a very nice Christmas as well, or whatever you celebrated on the 25th. Uh, this is the 35th episode of the Cleveland Pulse podcast. And today, with me, as always, my co host, Jeff Santa, and I am Justin Harold. We will be talking about the Ohio State versus Clemson Sugar Bowl game and the Browns versus Steelers week 17 matchup, which is a uh, currently slated to be a one o'clock game if all things uh remain the same as of today um but jeff happy new year's how are you doing my guy good happy new year to you too buddy i'm glad we're out of 2020 um 21 starting off a big way i mean we got today a little little bit weird ohio state playing on a friday but new year's day that's that's the norm for college football so makes sense and then we get the one day break on saturday and then we're back at it again with the with the brownies uh um probably the biggest weekend of the year for cleveland ohio sports in that nature absolutely and uh uh, a a pretty big game for ohio state in terms of uh you know there's a lot for ohio state not just because it's clemson um but Dabo sweeney you know kind of disrespecting us a little bit too much in the preseason polls and all that putting us all the way at 11th which is just you know, I feel like he's got, for some reason, he has, like, a vendetta against us for some unknown reason. I mean, mm. the dude beat us last year. I don't know why he's, like, all pissy and everything, but, like, okay. But essentially, this this Clemson team, um, they're just, like, they're very good. Like, the reason why they're not number one is because uh, Trevor Lawrence missed one game the entire season. They lost that game. Um, but – you know, this is this is the same Clemson team from last year. And unfortunately, this is not the same Ohio State team from last year, uh, defensively, at least, which is going to be, you know, I think defensively, you know, we're very good schematically and everything. But, you know, there's no Chase Young this year. Uh, you know, Sean Wade is a great player. I, you know, our corners are usually pretty great. Jeff Okuda is not here. I don't think, you know, um, any guy really pops out like Jeff Okuda does to me. Um, but you know, offensively, we got some, we got some guys, but the big thing here and, you know, something that you were talking about, uh, before we got started was, you know, if Justin Fields, you know, plays an average game, if he plays the game that he played in Northwestern, we're getting blown mm-hmm. out. Oh, um, for sure. We're getting blown out, but getting you know, smoked. last year he played a very good game in my opinion. Um, and he'll have to play better than that this year, but I think there's a lot of weapons on the offensive side to kind of go into a shootout and then you know the defense just needs to they kind of need to pull Cleveland Browns where they need to you know get their Mm -hmm. turnovers and get yep um you know time sensitive turnovers and time sensitive stops so it'll be an interesting game college football is always a very uh interesting kind of game to watch in my eyes but what are what are your thoughts on it yeah I mean I think I don't know. I think college football and the NFL are probably two of the more popular American sports just because there's such good narrative building. It's honestly like, yeah, I mean, it was a weird season. Ohio State doesn't play as many games as other teams and Clemson, you know, loses the one game without Trevor Lawrence, but it's just an instant rematch of last year. A uh, game last year that Ohio State maybe wins with a different officiating crew. Not yep. going to bring that up again, yep. but uh, just kind of the truth. I hate to break it to people. Football move. It's whatever. I'm not upset about it, but I am. And no, you're right. The Browns, I don't think, I think that's the theme for this weekend. I don't think the Browns or Ohio State's defense really has the guts. Um, I think that we're probably going to give up huge chunk plays to Trevor Lawrence. He ran all over us last year from what I remember. And, yep. you know, we talk about Chase Young, but, he was, re- he was really a non-factor about halfway through the season last year because everybody was just double teaming him. Yeah. But triple teaming him. Yeah. If we can't get to, Monster. if we, if Lawrence is running all over us, like the, op- like the RPO and just option play like that, I mean, it's going to be a long day and probably the same way with the Browns. I mean, if we're giving up chunk plays, it's going to be, it's going to be a stressful weekend if guaranteed. Absolutely. I mean, just like, all right really quickly go back to that game from last year we were me you uh our buddy mike who goes to ohio state with uh with me uh it's like the last time i've hung out with people yeah the last time we were actually able to like have a big group of people together um we were watching that game and stride for stride me and mike were just freaking out the entire time i was like getting on my knee and everything but i just (laughs) remember when okuda got the forced fumble and 
you know, it would have been a touchdown, but they blew the whistle and ended up ruining an incomplete pass after the dude took three football moves, three steps, and targeting. What are the chances there's targeting this year in, in this game tonight? I'm thinking like 50 50. Yeah. Well, if Trevor Lawrence wants to engulf half his body onto the <laughs> lower half of the field again, dude, sure. I totally forgot about that. I saw that on Twitter and I like remember that there was targeting, but I forgot that he laid there for like three minutes and then got up and never went to the tent or nothing. I no. honestly can't stand Trevor Lawrence. Dude, I, it was I was so hoping the ridiculous. Jets were going to draft them so badly. Ridiculous. Yeah, that's I don't so... wish like ill on people, but like I do not want him to have a good NFL career. I just Sorry. don't think he I just don't think he is going to have a good NFL career. It's I just my will. honestly, if I'm being truthfully, truthfully he's honest, like Her- he's like Herbert, honestly. Almost I, the same player. There are so many Oh, that's actually a really good comparison, but um, what's it called? There are so many quarterbacks that are first round quarterbacks this year that we could get into later. I think the majority of them are bus. There's Depending just nobody on... I love it. Is there anybody you love in college football this year? I don't like, no. lo- I don't even love anyone on the Buckeyes. Like I, lo- I really like Chris Olave and uh, Trey Sermon. I mean, obviously, but Sean Wade is good. Yeah. Sean on Wade's the defensive cool. side. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, I mean, it's just nobody I really love. And the, the guy from BYU, kind of way off topic, who said that, oh, we'll play anybody anywhere. And then, yeah, they lost. and then get I, smoked. I hope, that, I hope that kid has a bad NFL career, too. Dude, um, what's it called? But I just don't think like any of the quarterbacks like pop off. Like everyone's going to, everyone, like it's kind of like the Kyler Murray year where like Kyler was the definitive number one right. pick. And that's probably what's going to happen. And I guess Joey Burrow was also number one pick, but I think his guys like Tua and Herbert were all very close uh, to him. If he hadn't, like, if he had messed up one time that season, Joey mm-hmm. Burrow, then maybe his draft class was just unreal. And this year yeah. is kind of just like, it's good, but it's not like last year. I think dude, people are how over-hyping many good it. Pl- how many good players in the NFL that are rookies though? Every week I literally see Justin Jefferson. I mean, people that weren't even drafted. James Robinson was undrafted free agent. Yeah. Stud. It was, all the quarterbacks were good. The wide receivers were good. Got good running backs. Clyde Edwards Hilaire, pretty good for a rookie. I mean, yeah. good times. It was it was it was a pretty good draft. I mean, we have our own guys over, you know, Jedrick Wills, very good. I mean, he's right super solid, but like you're right. There's not like a single person. There's there's one player that I like really liked, and he didn't play this year because he opted out early. Was uh Micah um, Pat, I think it's Patterson from LSU. Not LSU. Oh, yeah. Not oh, LSU. Yeah. Uh, PSU, um, PSU. He's PSU, linebacker. PSU, Penn State. Yeah. Yeah, he's probably the best linebacker in the nation. Didn't play. Yeah, he didn't play. Brown was... should draft him. Yeah, but he's going to be top 10. Oh, I was like, oh, I was yeah. like, that's so unfortunate. But there's a couple guys. Though. There's a couple guys that are, you know, on my radar for who the Browns should take. Obviously, the majority of them are defensive players. But um, returning back to the OSU talk, um, I'm really hoping – for Justin Fields to outdo uh, Trevor Lawrence just to spark the like controversy of, oh, is Trevor Lawrence the number one pick? The like, kill still end up being the number one pick, but I just want there to be controversy at that with Justin Fields. So here's, here's my thing with Justin Fields. He has to play great tonight. He has to be great. If, if OSU gets smoked and I could be wrong, I'm probably wrong, mostly just because the Jets or the Jaguars, somebody's going to mess it up. Whoever's first is taking Lawrence. You have to. Yeah. Uh, the Jaguars got to take Lawrence, but the Jets are probably going to mess it up either way. I but bet you Trevor, they stick with Darnold one more year. Yes, they could, but I think Fields falls drastically. If you think um, he's the third quarterback taken, do you think, think the? Not. I think if if we get smoked tonight, I think he's worse than that. I think he's like fifth, just because. And I, I'm big. I'm a big narrative guy, but if you if you drafted Ohio State quarterback the last however many have came out you're not you're not very you know thrilled with that choice and all this Dwayne Haskins news coming out this week like Justin Fields is I mean we don't breed quarterbacks I'm not going to sit here as an Ohio State fan we breed defensive ends yep for the last defensive decade yeah we and defensive backs that I mean that's basically who we are and on the occasion wide receivers yeah, once in a while. I mean, Michael Thomas, obviously, and uh, Terry McLaurin. Terry McLaurin, but, uh, McLaurin yep. Yeah, we're big defensive guys. You don't really want to draft Ohio State's quarterback. You really don't. Yeah, my my thing with that is I think Fields, like, he he makes some really good throws sometimes. But, again, he's playing against – majority of the time, he's playing against really garbage competition. I mean, oh, he had yeah. a, a six-game sample size, and in, in the, big, the biggest game of the year, he fell mm-hmm. very far. 
um, which, you this know. This year's draft's just tough. I mean, there's so many different, like, variables and stuff, too. Right. Like, some conferences played less. Some conferences started late. Like, I don't know why people hate on Ohio State so much, Dabo Sweeney. I don't know why people think that, like, Indiana, like, wasn't, like, a good team. They're like, oh, you big guys beat Indiana. Like, yeah, Indiana was pretty good, I think. It's all the SEC – People just going like, oh, we're the close <laughs> conference wall. Georgia's getting smacked by – well, they're not getting smacked, but they're getting beaten by Cincinnati Florida, 21 to Florida got 10. boat raced yeah. by a Big 12 school. Come on, man. Smacked. Um, and then I think – who's the other team that's playing right now? Um, they were leading at halftime. Oh, Northwestern's beating um, – who is it? Uh, they're beating another SEC team is what matters. I um, love New Year's Day bowl games. Northwest. They're beating Auburn. I, yeah, they're beating Auburn. 14 nothing. <laughs> yep. Yep. The SEC is so good. They're so good. They're just the Cincinnati, best. Is conference. Cincinnati going to win this game? Yes. And it's going to be so funny. That was Cincinnati should have been. Uh, that, I almost want to say that game was a win win for me. No, I'm being so toxic today. That game's a win win for me because the Cincinnati, SEC people, SEC fanboys are at the, the top of my list for like. The worst fans. If you have a team that's different, like if you're an Alabama like fan, if you're yeah, but don't just like pick a squad. But like I shouldn't say New up, England, Tom Brady fans, but keep going. I'm sorry. I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. There's people on Twitter that are Lakers fans all of a sudden. Oh, true, 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 true. Which I mean, I can you know whatever. LeBron but if fans. You just, if you're yeah, if you're an SEC fan and you're just like, oh, the SEC is the best conference, but I don't really root for anybody. That I like, I don't really like. I don't even really want to talk to you anymore. But at the same time, I can't stand because, you know, there's people on my feed that are from our area that are, that go to Cincinnati and stuff that Cincinnati should be in the top four, which I mean, maybe, but like either way, I was fine with that game because mm-hmm. I don't think Cincinnati's, I don't think, I don't think SEC teams are like Georgia wasn't good enough to get in the top four. And I don't think, I think people think, I don't know, maybe Cincinnati's really nasty, but I don't think they would have got smoked by Bama, I think, personally. Yeah, no matter who was going to be at four, they're probably going to get smacked by yeah. Bama, whether it be Notre Dame or Cincinnati. I just wanted oh, to see sure. Cincinnati to, like th- – so Cincinnati, I, I really like If they win today, that's of, great. Yeah, I really like them because of Luke Fickle and everything and his tie to mm-hmm. Ohio State. But, um, you know, Notre Dame has uh, Sean Crawford, which, like, gives me, like, a yep. little bit more of, like, a, you know, high school teammate and all that kind of thing. Um, and I think they have, like – the pedigree of Notre Dame just kind of like makes me think, Oh, they, they have a little bit better of a chance than Cincinnati would against a big team like Alabama. Um, but we'll see, we'll see how that goes. But yeah, I mean today, Hey, maybe today's just a good day for the sec to get smacked around. I think, it, I think it's a good day. So, but um, all their bowl games. Yeah. Would be fantastic. But what do you think about um, in just terms of talking about bowl games, do you think it's fair for the top four teams to get to play in the Rose Bowl. I feel like the Rose Bowl should be for like a team that doesn't get into the playoffs. Like whoever is five and six should get the Rose Bowl game. Because it's the Rose Bowl and the Sugar Bowl, right? Yeah. Yeah. I just think they kept it like that because those are just like the biggest those were just like the biggest well known bowl games. Right. Um, I don't know. I'm not I feel like the name even with the college football playoffs, the names just don't like mean as much to me. Like Really? I don't know. I mean, it's not that big of a deal for me. I think that they should – I kind of like the system they have now. I I wouldn't care either way if they expanded it. People talk about expanding it every year. But, mm-hmm. I mean, if you expand it to eight, then people are going to be like, well, let's just move it to 16. Like, how yeah. many weeks of football are you going to have, like, 18 through 20-year-olds play? Like, come on. Yeah. I don't know. The, the Rose Bowl has always been, like, a really just, like, special game in right. college football for me for some reason. Um, but, yeah, it. I, I mean, it belongs to, like, the best teams. But I just feel like that the college football playoffs should, like, be a separate thing without the bowl games. But it's whatever. Yeah, that's what so. you're saying. Yeah. So, um, you got anything else you want to talk about college before we get to move on? No, college football is fun. It's not as fun as the NFL, that's for sure. Yeah, just don't like. There's no, there's no defense in college football. Um, it's slower, which I'm not even really like opposed to it being slower. But there's just there's a lot more. I think there's stuff that the NFL could take from college football, maybe. But I think college football could take so much from the NFL that like these kids are going to play NFL football. Like, why aren't the rules similar? Like targeting the whole targeting thing needs to get reviewed. Yeah. Um, it's just, I don't know. There's no defense. There's just, 
Even no. the SEC, there's no defense in the SEC. There's there wasn't even defense in the Big Ten really this year. Um, it's just getting a little bit out of hand. We need some, some more hard nosed defenses in in the college football scene. That's a great point. You know what else is a great point? Transition point. Uh, talking about no defenses, the Cleveland Browns are going to play the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers this weekend with already a piss poor defense we is there lost. a defensive starter playing on on either team besides the like besides our d line yeah besides our d line i don't know um we have a lot of guys on the COVID list right now currently um denzel ward being the biggest name there so immediately take our second best player off the off the defense and we're already like back best. to yeah depending on the day i mean miles has been not great since he's come back from yep. uh, COVID, which is a huge bummer. And then, you know, to think about what it could do to a guy like Denzel. I mean, if you look at Miles, Miles like – Winded. Yeah, that dude's winded. And if Denzel's got to chase dudes down the entire mm-hmm. game, uh, I just hate to think about it. But um, the guys on the COVID list currently are – so, B.J. Goodson from last week, he's still not eligible to play. Malcolm Smith, uh, Andrew Sandejo, uh, Denzel Ward, those are our defensive guys. And then Harrison Bryant is also on that list. And then we have guys returning. We have our entire wide receiving core that we missed for the New York Jets game. And then Jacob Phillips should also be back. And then I'm just looking here now at the – from Daryl Ryder, the – injury report it looks like everyone is good to go except for maybe nick harris who has not practiced either day uh kendall lamb who has not practiced either day as well and then i think everyone else it's it's limited but they all know that this is a playoff game this is a playoff game for the cleveland browns it's one week early i really like what i've been seeing on um a lot of the talk shows you know first takes first um with nick wright and all those guys, Brandon Marshall. Brandon Marshall's not great, but uh, Nick Wright is amazing. And uh, whoever the – what is the girl's name on there? They bring on multiple different people, but that girl's always on. She hates – she's just like the girl from uh, Colin Coward's show um, where they just hate on Cleveland for some reason, like for no it's good reason. To do. Yeah, but, like, it's like – like Nick Wright will say something positive about, about the Browns, and she'll, like, scoff. And I'm like – why like what is like what is Cleveland ever done to you but um this is a huge game obviously but it also feels like it's been minimized by the fact that the Steelers are resting um four huge players obviously Big Ben is resting and the biggest one for me is TJ Watt is resting which is a thank God because he wrecked havoc on us in the last game Cam Hayward and Mike Pouncey as well two veteran guys so you know, they have a lot of guys that they're just playing out resting while we have guys who are out with COVID. And we, we've just had like a COVID shit storm, which is awful to say going into this game. And it's just been like the mm-hmm. most, like, tw- like that was like the last bit of 2020. It's like, what just happened there? It's like, what the heck? Like a, a half our team's going down with COVID. Yeah, it's not good. I mean, we've been talking about it all year. We The Browns have been pretty lucky um, except for, you know, now, of course, typical the last two weeks, um, the AFC North has just kind of been screwed all year with it. Um, probably at this point is affected, you know, no other division worse than the AFC North just because of our situation. But, I mean, I guess that's the luxury that Pittsburgh is going to get. I mean, they're basically accepting the three seed, which I guess they kind of need the, the rest, though. They had a week three bye, which is – Annoying something you've they, talked about for a very long time just if, constantly if they reminded if they would have lost and we would have won they wouldn't have been able to do this so yeah i mean that's that's a couple of ifs but i mean they look good in the second half last week that's the best half football they've played it's the best like quarter in like two minutes that game was still like 20 that game was like 24 7 with like two minutes left in the third quarter and they won 24 to 8 like or 24 20 28 24 and i don't know we got to win this is a simple game this should be very easy. I'm sure we're going to make it difficult. I'm sure we're going to make it close. I hope we don't, but yeah, really, what did we say? 30, 17. We'd like, we'd really like to, the last time, the last time the Browns won a game at Cleveland. uh, What does it say? It says from Daryl Ryder last time, last win to end a regular season over the Steelers in Cleveland. 
3017 on December 18th, 1983. Long that is just ago. so long ago. Absurd. <laughs> but, you know, um, I feel way better about a lot of this just mainly because of the team that we have offensively. I Like, for me to say that the defensive starters that we're missing are, like, huge, like, not really. If I'm being honest, a lot of those guys are going to be gone next year, in my opinion. B.J. Goodson, Malcolm Smith, maybe they're not gone, but they're probably not going to be starters on this team next year. Andrew Sandejo, we're getting Ronnie Harrison back, but we're losing Denzel Ward. Um Honestly, I don't care about a lot of these guys on defense being missed. If it was our defensive line, I'd probably be way more like worried mm-hmm. because I want to get pressure on Mason Rudolph and make that dude uh, make mistakes. Because I don't think he's got you know what it takes to beat us. But um, I'm just happy that offensively we should have the entire starting offense for what feels like might be the first time since like the beginning of the season. I feel like every other week like either someone's out Wyatt Teller's out or Conklin's out or someone was out and we just never had a full offense but this is like the first time that I can remember that you know we're gonna have all of our offensive linemen back all of our wide receivers back all of our running backs back and obviously Baker who hasn't missed a game and I'm ready for I'm ready for the shootout and I'm just ready for us to you know uh kind of sling the ball and run with whatever we got there's a 70 percent chance of snow so probably going to see a lot of, yeah, rain probably, but you're probably going to see a lot of running. I think <laughs> Kevin's going to realize. We get whatever we want though on the ground. I mean, their whole, their defense line is basically not playing. Like it's interesting. It should that, be simple game plan. Yeah. It's interesting though. You know, just talking about who's out for them though. Like it's interesting that Minka Fitzpatrick isn't out. Like if you're worried about people getting injured, which like weird. I'm sure that's why TJ's out because they don't want him to get injured. They're like, if he's injured, we're screwed. He's like the best. He's the best thing before Minka. They're freaking um, me out. The whole week's freaking me out. I don't know why. Because it's, not it's like, been a chaotic week. I understand. It's been a chaotic week for us. It's just like, are they trying to win? Like, are they try? Like, I'm sure they're not gonna like just roll over. But it's, I don't know. Are they? If it's close in like the fourth quarter, are they gonna like put people in? Are they gonna like send Big Ben out for a drive if it's like close in the fourth quarter? Mm, that's whack no they couldn't do that i mean they could but I, that'd be whack i'd Speaking be upset of, here's a you want to hear a funny thing about minka fitzpatrick so what? last week i was watching the dolphins game dolphins raiders and at that point the dolphins were the number one ranked defense in the nfl last really week. and they traded minka fitzpatrick away last year imagine if they would have kept them that's crazy who, so did, annoying. did that pick who did that pick end up being it became like an offensive lineman for i don't even know for the future i think it was austin jackson actually because i i saw something recently with the dolphins it's like the last 10 years of dolphins picks and like the majority of them are gone except for <laughs> the last two years which is right. crazy but but fitzpatrick is is out he has covid so i mean that's that's decent I guess that's some luck for our way, just in case we lose. Oh, you're Hopefully. talking about – I was thinking you were talking about Minka still, and I was like, no, oh, he no, switched no, over right, to Ryan yeah. Tannehill. Ryan Fitzpatrick. Or Brian, Ryan, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick. Yeah. Dolphins. A lot of Dolphins players. God bless it. I said Tannehill. So they're going to have to play Tua, but they've been – I don't know. I don't know how their record is that good. I don't think it should be. They've been doing quarterback revolving door for like the last six, seven weeks. But, I mean, shout out to Brian Flores, I guess, doing a good job down there. Good for him, though. I, 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 except yep. for the fact that you know they are in contention with a playoff spot for us. But um, mm-hmm. I, I, I said at the beginning of the season, Arizona, Miami, us. I was really hoping those three teams would get into the playoffs because I just yep. think you're you right. Know, they're young teams and they'd be really fun to watch. Obviously, um, I, I think we'd be so fun to watch just because, like, I feel like team. I feel like teams know we have what it takes to put up points if we're healthy, of course. Um, obviously last week we couldn't do that without our wide receivers, but I think teams are like slightly scared that like, if they get into a shootout with us, are we, are we mm-hmm. going to have the ball last or are they going to have the ball last and what's going to happen? But you know, it, it doesn't matter if we don't get past this week. So, I mean, I think the team's ready. I think, you know, I think from what I've gathered from listening to a lot of the press conferences and everything is like, they're in, they're in the mindset of like, this is a playoff game. And this is something that be. we haven't had, like, you know, they're, they're, They've always been the one and O this week kind of thing. And this is still one and O, but the fact that they're, they're taking this as a playoff game a week early, is something that we have never had. There's something that I haven't had um, since I've started following 
Cleveland Browns football as tightly as I have. So um, for this to happen is amazing. Uh, I'm going to be at that game. I'm going to freeze my ass off, but you know, I, the atmosphere is probably going to be nuts. It's kind of similar to what I said at the beginning of the season um, in a kind of slightly lesser mood where I said, you know, what if the, what if the final game of the season is for the AFC North? It could have been last week if we had won last week, but um, it's for a chance for a playoff spot. And this is, you know, the closest we're going to, you know, we've been and, I think the team's going to come out and play probably one of its bet- better games that we played all season all around. I think it'll be a good game. Hopefully it's not like you say where we'll make it tough on ourselves, but um, mm, yep, we've got to always, that. always got to have that thought as a Browns fan. Right. We probably will, you know? So let me ask you, did you see on Twitter Baker's response to a Mary Kay uh, question? I saw the tweet and I didn't listen to what he said, but I've been hearing some oh bad God. news about her, her and Grossi all week long. I guess dude, people so toxic. Dude, people hate when those two ask questions. But like, so like <laughs> the question old, was like, retire. Well, Grossi's Grossi's like Grossi's in the. And I don't want to like been speak, around for like thirty years. Yeah, I don't want to speak ill of anyone, but like him and Baker, awful connection. And then I will. I'll speak ill of all everybody. Get them out. <laughs> Mary, Mary Kay, um, like Mary Kay, like usually she's fine. She like all the reporters like are fine for the most part, but like, I think, you know, they caught Baker after a game where he fumbled away three balls or he fumbled away two of them. Um, and you know, she asked him like, um, do you think you'll have like a, 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 you like have an edge going into this game with how you're feeling and everything. Um, and Baker answers the question once and then she asks it like again, but in a different way. She's like, are you going to use it as an advantage? And that's like the keyword. She goes like advantage and Baker just goes, no, I think I'll use it as like a disadvantage and I'll fumble the ball four more times. And so like, obviously like, and then it's just like silence for like a couple seconds, <laughs> obviously. It's and getting pissed off. Yeah. But like reporters but, are so all semantics. I don't even know why they're there. All, most of them ask dumb questions anyway. Some of them ask the same questions. Like I, I watch those things because like it's somewhat in a vein of what I want to do eventually, maybe. Right. But like, but like some of them just ask the same questions every week. Like in, like originality is like not a thing of the NFL because like you got to ask certain questions. Like if someone if someone's gonna talk about like if a player's hurt, like yeah, you're gonna ask that question if you're first up. But after that, like people just ask the same question because they're like, oh, am I going to get that first question? Like you got to have like multiple questions lined up and have them be mm-hmm. like somewhat unique and somewhat in the vein of like, I think it was my uncle who was talking about Terry Pluto. He writes for the Browns and he, you know, he had an article about when we played the Colt or not the Colts, uh, Colt McCoy, when we played Colt McCoy mm-hmm. uh, uh, in the Giants game and he was the only quarterback still quarterbacking from the year that he was drafted. All the other Mm. quarterbacks apparently are not quarterbacking um, or something in that vein of like a super interesting fact that he wrote about. Like that's something like, Oh, that catches my eye or that catches like what I, if I hear it on the radio or something like that catches my attention, but like all these other questions and all these other things that reporters Mm. are going on about on a weekly basis are just like the same old, same old, like, Oh, like, what are your thoughts going into this game? Oh, like how are your thoughts after this game? If you're like, if you're just, I don't know though, like I don't really follow like Mary Kay or Grossi on like social media, like obviously, but like me and your guy, Daryl Ryder, like you got to be reporting for like social media. Like I'm Mm -hmm. like, I'm not catching every press conference, honestly, just for, I mean, the sake of like time. Like I'm not going to be sitting there watching every press conference, but like I'm scrolling through Twitter and like Daryl Ryder does a great job. Like, yeah, he has like some of his own opinion and some stuff. He just tweets direct quotes or just like facts or stats. Like I don't need, I don't need you bogged down with like, Oh, you're just asking people questions. Like report actually report on like how you view the situation. Like don't just ask him a question and then just be like, Oh, I need to ask him this question, but in a different way. Yeah. And that's how like, like Daryl is boasted as like the beat reporter for the Browns. Mm-hmm. And that's why like, I like him. And you know, somehow uh Grossi was also in that vein like 10 a decade or so ago <laughs> and but like Daryl is very good and it's not to say there's like a lot of them though like a uh, Didi Kikabanka who is now a Steelers reporter um like a few years ago she was a Browns reporter then went over to Pittsburgh but she still gets the occasional questions with us 
is super interesting and she does a really good job um but yeah i mean uh, just kind of going back to the point of like you know how baker and the team feels like this game for them if they lose it's it's i can't like imagine what may happen in the off season i feel like you know it's like it's such a pivotal thing where like if they it's it's a pivotal thing if they lose, but if it's not, like it's just kind of like oh the Steelers rested the majority of their team. You got to play mm-hmm. them next week now at Heinz Field in a playoff game, and like this could be the case very well. Yeah, and you know like I'll I'm listen. We make it the playoffs. I'm gonna be over the moon. Uh, Absolutely, have lots of things to say. But like again, I think the the losing is way worse than the winning. Like the feeling that I'll have after that. I It'll think be- losing, losing, and like somebody else loses, I think that's the worst case scenario. If we lose and get in, I mean, that's probably yeah, what will happen. Fair. Though honestly, it's going to be like, well, I mean, it's just so sad. Like, there's where they gave us an extra playoff spot this year, and we need a basically a freebie from the Steelers to make the playoffs. Like, am I like, yes, I'm going to be, I'm going to be ecstatic and thrilled if we make the playoffs either way. But if we lose in our ten and six, and we make the seventh seed after we just lost to Pittsburgh's JV team, just because some other team lost, like that would yeah. be the most Browns way to do it. Really? Yeah. That'd be upsetting, but I don't know. I I'm feeling good. I think the team's feeling good offensively, at least um, we'll see what happens. I hope, man, I really do hope miles gets to Mason Rudolph twice though. I hope we just do. leaves, just leaves just afterwards. Torch but us. No, come on. Come on. He has nothing to lose, though. That's what makes me nervous. That's, they're that's like playing some guys. Like, they don't really have anything to lose. Like, they kind of – like, they're in the three seed, worst case. They're at the two seed, best case. Mason Rudolph has nothing to lose. Our defense is basically not there besides the front four. And they're still playing some of their starters. Weird. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. But it's going to be a good game. Good game at first. Energy Stadium. Atmosphere is going to be crazy. Browns fans are going to be crazy. I'm going to be crazy. But yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good weekend. I think if you know the the Buckeyes win tonight, I think it's a signal for uh, things to come for this entire weekend. So, Jeff, you got anything else? What's making me nervous, and I'm a, I'm gonna say this, and I'm if I jinx it, I jinx it. But what's making me nervous? You got the Kansas City Chiefs with one loss, okay. and I don't have the stats off the top of my head, but I would be very surprised if there was another team besides the Kansas City Chiefs with one loss and the Cleveland Browns with five losses who have not lost back-to-back games. I'm sure there's other teams out there, but we haven't lost back-to-back games. That's I don't know if that's making me nervous or if that's making me confident. And apparently I saw something on Twitter that are – I know what you're talking like, about. We have like the same structure. We lose one and then we win like win four. One. And we've gone on multiple four-game winning streaks. It's it's like it's all wins and then it's a loss. And then it's a win and then it's a loss mm-hmm. and then it's win, 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 win. Then yeah. it's a loss, win, loss, win, 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 win. Take us to the Super Bowl. And so now we're at the point of like winning. We we so we lost to Baltimore, then we beat the Giants, then we lost to the Jets. So now they're like, mm-hmm. oh, mm-hmm. like now this is four wins in a row. Steelers, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, that would be sick. That'd be amazing. That would go. That'd be crazy. But yeah, we haven't lost back to back games, which is probably the most impressive thing about the whole season. You know, of the whole team is like a nucleus. We haven't lost back to back games, so. Go one and know. Easy. Yeah. Hopefully it continues to roll. So, well, everyone, that's where we're going to call it. Uh, I hope, like I said at the top, I hope you all had a very blessed New Year's. I want you all to continue to be safe while we go into this, uh, you know, new 2021. And uh, just thank you all for watching this video. Thank you for listening. Uh, if you guys could kindly share, like, subscribe, uh, leave us some comments. Tell us what you guys think is going to happen tonight with the Buckeyes and what you guys think is going to happen on Sunday with the Browns. So uh, without further ado, thank you all for being here and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.